Oh, there's all little bits of steam coming out of Block Party's machine at the end there. I don't know what he was talking about, but whatever it was, it's very important. Why, well, I know he seemed absolutely incensed. Incensed about it. Mm. And excited. <laughs> oh, that was Block Party. And this is uh, Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music uh, on a Saturday morning uh, for our three hour Saturday morning show. It's a marathon of fun. That's what I would call it. A funathon. A fun marathon. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's like a three-hour fun run. Um, it's a nice morning as well, folks. I don't know if you've been out yet, but certainly here in London town, can't speak for the rest of the United Kingdom, and I wouldn't want to. No. But here in London, it's nice. It's crisp. It's a lovely winter morning. You know, what are the best things about winter for you, Joe Cornish? Oh, Santa. Yeah. The reindeer, the thick, thick snow. Uh, <laughs> all the Hollywood stars, yeah. shopping. That's mainly Christmas, though. I'm thinking uh, winter, winter in general. Yeah. The season. Uh, I, yeah, the, 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 I don't know. Because there's lots of downsides to winter. Who uh, are the people who suffer most in the this winter? This is a very tiring opening leg. I know, I'm putting you on the spot here. I'm sorry about that. God, but what? But here, the people who suffer most in the yes. winter, they would be the farmers, wouldn't they? And, yeah. the, and the homeless. Whatever. Farmers and homeless, they're the most underprivileged groups in society. Mm. But uh, there are nice things about winter as well. I wanted to chat about some of those a bit <laughs> later on. <laughs> That's something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a tease. Lots of good music c c coming up in the show. A car car coming up in the show. Uh, I just scratched that bit. Oh, it's nice. Uh, we've got some Lethal Bizzle coming up. We've got some Blur, some De La Soul. Uh, we're not going to play PM Dawn with Set Adrift on Memory Bliss. What have you got against PM Dawn? That's the most pathetic rap song Maybe ever you recorded. you send me... It's terrible. Set adrift on the memory bliss. Who's that guy? What's he called? Prince B, wasn't he? Something like that, yeah. He was confused. He was confused. Lots of great music. Of course, we're going to, uh, in a second, reveal the winner of last week's Song Wars. Then later in the show, we'll have this week's Song Wars, which is on the theme of global warming, sung very sincerely with some whistling. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, we've also got Text the Nation and all sorts of exciting uh, nuggets. Yeah, scurrilous rumour, you know, inconsequential chatter, ill-advised gossip, that kind of thing. All of that to look forward to. But right now, here's some music for you. This is uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Go on, you can go out there and for goodness sake, just, just stop going on about it. Let me out! Have we got the results of last week's Song Wars standing by? Do you, have you folded them up? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's hit the jingle. That was, uh, just before the jingle, I'll just tell you that that was Smashing Pumpkins, in case you didn't realise, with Cherub Rock. That was Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pumpkins. It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. So this is it. Uh, last week's songs were on the subject of a listener. We invited listeners to write in with facts about a close friend. And then we wrote songs around those facts. Uh, mine was about a guy called Jack Meller. Mine was about, about a guy called James Rohan. Mine was requested by Joel. Uh, Don't Martin, forget, remember his second name. I think, yeah, I think Mark was the name of James's mm. friend. Are we going to play Little Reminders? Or have you got the whole blooming things? Do you, do you want the clips or the full thing? Let's just have the clips, don't you think? Yeah, little clips, I think. Um, this was my one about Jack, Jack Miller. Jack was raised on a farm, but Jack was quite posh. Yeah, that's enough. That's enough. They might need to be beefed up a little bit volume-wise there. There's a man whose name is James <laughs> Rohan. He's a beast. <laughs> on the surface, he is not her suit, but his armpit. This is Adams. What was this one called? Uh, James Rohan, Neanderthal, Neanderthal Man. Neanderthal Man. Okay, and I'm going to open the envelope now to reveal the winner. It's very exciting. I just remind listeners that I have, that me, Adam Buxton, I have lost wow. Song Wars every single week for the last four weeks. This would be week number, no, this would be week number four that I had lost in a row if I lose again. Is it? What? No, this is show number five. Yes, yeah, so it would be five. Yeah, number yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, look at that. It, the tables have turned. Yes! Adam has taken it by 75% to 25%. Thanks, fans! Bucko wins. Bucko smash a room! Oh, I'm happy about it. I can't, I can't pretend that I'm not happy about it. I've got a, a quite a good email that's an analysis of your song. Oh, really? But but it's through there on the printer. Should we play the next record and I'll go and get it? Yes, okay. We'll read it out. Well, that's that's good. So are we going to play my song in full then? No. <laughs> the winning song? <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, then if we have to. Yes! 
Here's James Rohan, Neanderthal man. There's a man whose name is James Rohan. He's a beast. On the surface, he is not her suit, but his armpit hair is scary. And for that reason, he is known as Harry. He is preoccupied with lady parts and solo fun. Before the internet, he lived upon the top shelf. He bought a Lindsay Dawn McKenzie DVD one time, but returned it because it wasn't really dirty. He likes football and drinking. He's not a fan of thinking He nearly gets in fights with folks at karaoke nights He sounds like quite a nightmare But perhaps that isn't quite fair Maybe there's a softer side to Harry that he's trying to hide for example, Jimmy Rohan used to be a swimming champ Which is when they had to shave all his hair off When it grew back, it was longer and coarser Which may have left him with some feelings of resentment On the plus side, Jimmy Rohan really likes Star Trek Which indicates that he is not beyond redemption James Rohan, Neanderthal man Learn from the lessons of the track Here's and a couple of... His mum is really fit emails that we received over the week in relation to that song well, one was from rich flight hmm. uh he's the web administrator at the climber shop limited in cumbria oh yeah i in went Amber to that side job, didn't he it. says hi adam and joe despite its slightly suggs-esque vocal styling mm -hmm. i think adam's hairy neanderthal man song is by far the superior i'm not saying i'd go out and buy it <laughs> but if i had to choose one then it's the dot 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 least dot 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 bad <laughs> that's nice isn't it that's fair and here's the analysis this is by a guy called craig uh mackin m-a-c-h-i-n i'm gonna read it out in a kind of new england uh, american intellectual paul theroux style voice mm -hmm. he says hello chaps great to hear you're back on the air i hope you start doing a podcast again soon that's not really a pull through voice that's more like david byrne david byrne okay my vote is for adam's james rohan neanderthal man the chugging relentless first melody with its gruff vocals perfectly highlights the nefarious character of james the song subject i'm going to stop this voice at first this sounds like it's going to be a jocular hatchet job on james's character but then our attitudes are questioned by the change of emotional tone, both lyrically and musically, during the chorus stroke middle section. Adam switches to a more melodic and sincere singing style, yeah. which insists that we do not just see James simply as a beast or a figure of fun. Quotes. <laughs> he sounds like quite a nightmare, but perhaps that isn't quite fair. <laughs> Maybe there's a softer side to Harry that he's trying to hide. Wow. The chorus ends on an unresolved chord. Is there a softer side to Harry? <laughs> the verse returns with barely a pause for breath, now sounding emphatic <laughs> rather than mocking, and provides us with the answer, yes, Harry is not beyond redemption. Quote, wow. For example, Jimmy Rohan used to be a swimming champ. We're also given an insight into the trauma that may have made Harry the man he is physically and psychologically. Adam, like James's defence advocate, beseeches the listener to take James's full body shape into consideration, bravely pointing out, even though the line does not rhyme, that it might have left James with feelings of resentment. As well as more than the average quota of body hair, the simplicity and brevity of the song belies its complex arguments for acceptance of other lifestyles and appearances. With its reggae-inspired tune, the listener is reminded of the anti-racist scar songs by white performers in the early 80s. As for Joe's song... Nah, it's not as good. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Craig. That's fantastic. I've got to frame that. Yeah, keep that. That's amazing. So that's that's this week's uh, Song Wars. We'll have another Song Wars coming up in a bit. We have to leave a bit of a gap to clear the air of the stench of amateur, <laughs> amateur music. Uh, but there will be some more amateur parping uh you know at, at around 10 o'clock so hold tight now this is not an amateur song is this something that you chose joe yeah what is it bdp yeah this is brilliant this is from um uh um uh, 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 um, uh a man <laughs> uh, 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 uh. joe just had a little brain fart <laughs> <laughs> this is from bdp they're called boogie down productions this is a great album called ghetto music the blueprint of hip-hop i thought it was deleted but then i found it in america you must have been so happy that day. i was so happy oh wicked i found it and this is a track from it this is called the style you haven't done yet Yes, the white men are in effect here on BBC Six Music. It's uh, Adam and Joe on a Saturday morning. Hello. He had a little lyrical nod to Hall and Oates there. Did he? I'm out of touch, you're out of time. Did he? Yeah. I wonder how that relates date-wise. 
Uh, well, they were 1981, something like that. There's a digital, uh, a cable channel called Main Street. Uh -huh. Do you ever stumble across it? Oh, yeah, sometimes. And it sometimes. plays uh, reruns of the old Grey Whistle Test. Yes. And Hall & Oates were on it last night. That's right, they play like whole concerts. Yeah, it was br it's brilliant. It, was that a good one? Because I, I saw, uh... Who did I see on Whistle Test and it wasn't quite so good? <laughs> Hall & Oates were playing a song called Abandoned Luncheonette. Uh -huh. It went on for hours. Right. They were furious that the luncheonette was abandoned. Oh, I saw Tom Petty, a Tom Petty special. I like Tom Petty. Mm. Oh, it wasn't a very well, good Well, they're often very, very early performances. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the end of that conversation. Well, you know, listen, I was uh, talking about winter earlier on. I, I don't want to, like, talk to you about winter. Mm. But I just thought it would be nice it's just to... just so, so broad. Yeah, I know it is. Listen, I'm going to narrow it down for All you. All right. Right, because I, I thought it would be worth celebrating the positive aspects of winter that are seldom celebrated. You know what I mean? Because people are very pro-summer. Everyone writes songs about the summer, that kind of thing but I, there's certain things that really i love about the winter and, all right uh, and i want to tell you about them now here are my top favorite three things about the winter getting very cold water out of taps all the time isn't that nice do you not mm. enjoy that you, you like the world is the world is a water cooler exactly kind of yeah yeah, that's true. You know, you don't have to run it for ages to get the cool mm. stuff. That's and summertime, very true. Summertime, summertime, you have to run it. You run it for about five minutes there, and you uh, and it's not even getting very cool. Where? Uh, just there. There. And you start thinking, oh, now I'm wasting water, and I'm not even going to get a cool glass of water out of it. Not a problem in winter, when the freezing water is there instantly. Delicious. And I said before that, obviously, I'm taking into, you know, this is ignoring the fact that winter is a very hard time for a lot of very people. Very difficult. Very difficult, especially for if you're worms. homeless and if you're a worm and if you're a farmer, it, winter is not an enjoyable time. If you're a worm farmer, it, then, it's, imagine. then it's the worst. Hell on earth. The hard earth you have to deal with, it's a Let's nightmare. not even think about it. Here's another thing I enjoy about Number winter. two. Number two, not being constantly distracted and confused by attractive people, mainly women, wearing hardly anything. There's something sexy about too many clothes, though. Well, that's the thing I like. It's manageable sexiness, though. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, scramble your you mind. you know, the basis of eroticism is concealment. Well, there you go, of course. You know, eroticism is about what you can't see, not what you can. So, yeah. a woman in a massive puffer jacket, mm. 20 scarves, <laughs> a hard hat, <laughs> and massive boots is very sexy to me. I think, what's she like under all them layers? <laughs> <laughs> all red and sweaty is the answer. Yeah. That's yeah, sexy. That's that not sexy. just you describing that. It's nice. I'm going to play that back later on. Um, but no, I like it. You know, because in the summertime, sometimes you walk around and your days. If you're feeling a little bit uh, randy, your day's more or less ruined on a sort of five minute basis. A by little bit all Randy the, Newman. Yeah, a little bit Randy uh, McDonald, and and then it's just a disaster area. Um, here's the final thing I really enjoy. This is an obvious one about winter. Uh, just coziness. In the it's cozy duvet it? cocoon mm. oh sometimes you wake up in the morning if if you don't have to get up for work immediately and you're in the duvet cocoon that d life doesn't get that much better it's true oh. a lot of people listening to this will be in the duvet cocoon good times we wish we were there with you yeah oh i do i do no i do not you, you me you, well no, no we'd have the listeners in between us so we? we wouldn't have to touch <laughs> each other <laughs> but would we be touching them oh yes we don't like to touch each other we did a photo shoot this week for the bbc and when the photographer asked us to touch our heads together because they always ask us to do this when you're a kind of duo mm. or whatever and they're taking pictures of you they always say can you push your heads right together and do a kind of crazy face stick your tongue out joe just said nope <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to touch him imagine us appearing if you're in bed now listen to this imagine us appearing like something out of the uh, the grudge <laughs> under your duvet <laughs> yeah. fondling your ankles that's right Whoa. you know here's a here's a segue for you this is someone i would really enjoy it if she popped up the, the, my my grammar is all over the shop this morning but i would be delighted if this it's person... early man i think the first hour we, we yeah no one expects people to no. speak properly no there's no good nine and ten on saturday but if if our next artist popped up in the duvet cocoon i would be sorted this is bjork with earth intruders bjork sorry Lovely, lovely Bjork. Bjork, is that the way to pronounce it you said there? I don't know. Some people pronounce it Bjork, Bjork don't they? Bjork, Bjork. Oh, she's adorable. You um, know, yeah. 
some people we were talking about our amateur songwriting mm. um you were a bit worried that it's sort of taking over the program a bit well it's one of those things if you you know if you're not fond of a feature in a program and you mm. tune in your heart sinks because you think oh god, god. they're gonna be with this because for another we got it we play last week's then we play this week's mm. then we play this week's again it's sort of um, it's not perfect spreading all over the show like an like a fungus or an algae or a rash or a rash but some people like it here's an email from james pittendre <laughs> dear adam and joe i would love to have a copy of joe's version of place the meatballs any chance of emailing me one hmm. i can't get it out of my head <laughs> Someone asked me what I was singing in the work kitchen this morning as I was getting my morning coffee. Please must... the meatballs. <laughs> Please the meatballs. They must have thought I was a bit weird when I told them, when I told them, it was a song about how to cook IKEA Swedish meatballs. Is his name James Peter Andre? Possibly. I hope so. Yeah, Pit Pitandre. <laughs> Pitandre. And here's one <laughs> flattering about yours, Adam. Yeah? Hmm? Being balanced. Dear Adam and Joe, but mostly Adam. Hmm? This is from Sarah Castro. Please could you put the Scallywag classic Tiny Mobile Speakers back on the BBC website, because it's a work of pure genius. Even after 20 times of hearing it throughout that glorious week after the broadcast, I would always laugh, and it has been sorely missed. My mate Claire agrees, and it's her birthday this next weekend. Well, wow, This there you next go. weekend. Don't worry. Well, these are the kind of things that we'll put in our podcast when they eventually happen. We might yeah. talk about that a bit later on, give you a bit of an update. But right now, it's time for the news, read by Harvey Cook. The Foo Fighters with Long Road to Ruin, that's released on the 3rd of December, and George Lamb chatted to Dave Grohl on Thursday. You can hear the interview again if you head to George's page. I just ended the sentence suddenly. I like it. I like it. Keeps people switched on. Paying Absolutely. Attention. I'm going to go to George's page. I'd like to hear page. what Dave Grohl has to say. You yeah. Know? Is it... Text the nation time. I think it is. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, it's Text the Nation, the part of the show, uh, unlike any other program, where we ask you to text in about things. Uh, you can text 64046 or email, actually, Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk and what was the theme we established uh, last week there? you know very well what it was yeah but i'm doing it like a duo thing yeah but i want to put it all on you because i think it's a little bit of a, a f inflammatory one do you i think it's dangerous this one do you because i think it uh it, it's it's something that you should be ashamed of like one should be ashamed what? of. do you know what i mean this is the, basically the idea is uh for text the nation is ideas that you think you had before yes. anyone else exactly yeah but sometimes it genuinely happens i know it genuinely happens but i think it's a good thing in life it's an important thing in life to not dwell on it ever i agree but we're allowed to dwell on it for one saturday yeah, morning of course, for so. a couple of hours just to just to let off the steam uh yeah we're talking about ideas you think you had and then they turned up in the real world someone else had them a product or a film or a book or something because you can become a very twisted and bitter, bitter and person twisted. yeah absolutely and one of the important things about being creative <laughs> uh i'd like to let you know <laughs> yeah. is that you've got to have lots of ideas exactly you've got to be able just to throw them out and, and not worry about it and you've got to act on them that's the other key thing yeah. it's no good having an idea and then just sitting on it if you don't act on it exactly. you may as well never have had it here's my one what i had and i didn't act on Go quickly on uh i had an idea for we had an idea for a film about a couple of people who run a video shop and they make all the films that they rent out mm. Uh, so they get they it was you know gonna be a kind of an Adam and Joe show thing and they were gonna and they were gonna rent out silly spoof versions of films now M Michel Gondry who made uh, what did he make eternal sunshine of the spotless mind yeah and the uh, science of sleep yeah he's done it he's with uh, Jack Black and Moss Def what's it called it's called be kind rewind there you go and it's about uh, Moss Def and Jack Black run a video shop and uh, a meteor passes it, a magnetic meteor, and it erases all their VHS tapes. Don't ask why they're renting VHSs in in this day and age. It's set in the olden times, isn't it? it? I think so. And then they have to they have to make all the. So it's exactly that idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's done it. I'm sure a lot better than we would. Huh? Or maybe yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen it. Maybe not. People say it's pretty good. I bet it's good. Uh, but that makes me a bit. I can't kind of read about it. Or yeah. I, I might be feel sick when I go and see it. My idea that I had a while back, um, around about 2001, I did this, and I was watching a lot of director commentaries on, at the time on DVDs, and I just thought it would be funny to do like a spoof director commentary that f for a show that really didn't deserve one. Mm. Oh yeah, this is true. And uh, yeah, so I did a, a, a thing with my character Ken Corder. <laughs> 
you know, talks a little bit like this, and he's a bit of an idiot. And I did a whole commentary for an episode of a show called The Priory. Which With Jamie on. Thixton and Zoe Ball. Yeah. And it was, you know, it was a simple idea. It was just the idea. It was, it, it, it was spoof silly that... commentaries. That, yeah, spoof commentary for a show that uh, really w wouldn't merit one, uh, you know, as wonderful as The Priory was. So I did the whole thing and, and like, 45 minutes worth of ludicrous commentary. I made menus for it and everything. And uh, it was just something I did to amuse myself and my friends. But and then, then... But then I thought, I'm going to send this idea around, you know, because people really liked it. And a couple of my friends said, you should, you should pitch this to, like, a TV station or whatever. So I went around and pitched it to a few people. Everyone told me to uh, leave the building and uh, get out, and they weren't really. So a couple of people were vaguely interested, but they never acted on it. Two years later, uh, Rob Brighton did the exact same thing, director commentaries, but he did them for sort of old films. I'm not suggesting that he stole the idea, but it was a piece of synchronicity that uh, was very frustrating mm. for me, I must say. Anyway, we'd like to hear your ideas that you think you had before anyone anyone else with any kind of uh, supporting evidence. <laughs> yeah, text 64046 uh, or email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk uh, and we'll read the best ones out. Uh, now, here's some music. This is De La Soul with I Know. Uh, there are the plugs, yeah. one, two, and three from That's De La Soul. Good, man, that is good stuff. It sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 I know. And who are they sampling there? That's, uh... Steely Dan, isn't it? From Peg. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's an amazing song as well. Anyway, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We're with you for the next two and a quarter hours of fun. Yeah, Over to you, Joe Cornish. Coming up now, it's uh, advert analysis time. Mm -hmm. I've been watching, as I mentioned earlier, rubbish cable channels, and uh, they're obviously where the worst adverts collect, the kind of silly bang type adverts. Although, uh, before we continue very briefly, there's an ad that's bled over all channels at the moment for kettle chips. Have you seen that one? Uh, well, is it Vox Pops? Yeah, it seems yeah. to have been made by a five-year-old for yeah. uh, 50 pence. Well... We've often discussed this, uh, Adam and I, that uh, advertisers obviously go out of their way to make adverts weird. Yeah. So there's something sort of unsettling about them uh, that kind of sticks in your brain. And obviously these uh, kind of sink adverts, not adverts for sink, but the ones that sink to the bottom of the, mm -hmm. of the barrel that you tend to get on these uh, uh, digital channels are prime examples of that. That's right. They're really odd. They're sort of designed to, if you're a housewife, uh, to kind of educate you, but also freak you out. Yeah. And it, it's well known that, you know, stuff like the Silit Bang adverts, they're, they're designed to be odd, uh, they're designed to appeal to students, and they're kind of, uh, you know, knowingly uh, designed with an inbuilt sort of culty thing that yes. people get obsessed with them. Yeah. But they're getting very, very good at this. Uh -huh. it, it's not like sort of Pleasantville-style 50s stuff where everyone's just chirpy and it's this artificial world where everybody talks about products. It, it's gone beyond that Truman Show thing. Now they're starting to be really deliberately abstract in some of the editing and and presentation and and we can't say the name of the brand can we on on the big british Probably castle best not to best not to so i'm going to call it fluffite uh, it's a product for making clothes more fluffy you stick it in the old washing machine and there's a, a, an advert for fluffite uh, and we're going to perform it for you now a bedroom Lady number one is putting on a jumper, while her dark-haired friend, lady number two, lounges sultrily on the bed behind her, gazing at her bottom. Lady number one notices that her jumper is all stretched. Oh no! This one's all stretched too! Sudden cut to a strange man, standing in the kitchen. He's addressing the camera. Looks like she needs a bit of help. Back to the bedroom. In the time it took to say that one line, Lady Number One has taken off the stretched jumper, revealing a sexy white vest. She's hung the jumper on a hanger and is now inspecting it, her sexy friend standing close behind, looking worried. And I wash everything so carefully. Suddenly, the man reaches out and grabs the jumper, as if he's been in the same room all along, but for some reason was neither audible or visible. He addresses Lady Number One. It's not you. It could be your detergent, weakening the fibres of your clothes, leading to this kind of damage. We see jumpers damaged by shrinking, bubbling, and fibre damage. The man's disembodied hands gesture over the ruined woolens, finally entering a brown sleeve and popping a finger through a hole in it, giving the camera the finger. Now he thrusts a big bottle of fluffite with a huge bulbous blue plastic ball on the top towards the woman. Try new fluffite stop stretch. It's more than just a detergent. It's a safe detergent. The woman looks at her friend impressed at this amazing new word. Mmm. Her sexy friend returns her look aroused. And that means fluffite helps keep all your clothes looking and feeling new for longer. Uh, the word safe detergent comes up. It's trademarked. 
<laughs> the man holds up two jumpers. He's suddenly got two jumpers. He, he's got the jumper she originally took off, and it's suddenly all beautifully ironed and not stretched anymore. How did he do it so fast? Fade to black, fade up on the two ladies having coffee. Wow, new outfit? No, new detergent. Lady number two strokes lady number one's arm, then runs her other hand down her thigh, and they snog. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Cut back to the man in the kitchen, an array of bulbous bulbed bottles before him. New fluffied stop stretch. Gives you the power to become invisible, stop time, break into a beautiful lesbian woman's house, hide in her kitchen, wait until she notices her jumpers are stretching, and then very suddenly give her a product demonstration without anyone noticing anything unusual or calling the police. So keep an eye out for that one on, on the telly list. You made up that last line. I then. did make up the last bit. A safe detergent. That I can't believe they actually used the word safe detergent in it's there. It's not a detergent. <laughs> It's a safe detergent. Well, it's worked on us, hasn't it? Because it's stuck in yeah, our brains. Yeah, it's brilliant, though, because it means all other detergents are unsafe. Yes, that's You know, right. by definition. They're dan danger detergent. Danger detergents. Uh, death detergents. Death detergents. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, here's a track that I chose for for you folks. This is from an album that I was rooting through the, the bins of CDs here at BBC Six Music. There's huge kind of recycling bins with all the uh, multiple copies of CDs that go off to get recycled. And I found this one at the bottom, Suburban Kids with biblical names they're called and they're from sweden and they make a kind of uh lo-fi low-tech kind of uh, poppy noise that's uh redolent of early beck and all sorts of influences there uh but this is a good track i hope you like it oh it reminds me of the monochrome set early 80s uh outfit anyway check this out it's called seems to be on my mind by suburban kids with biblical names where's our podcast well where is our podcast that's a good point isn't it we've been a bit slow uh organizing it finalizing the details i think what's going to happen is that we are going to just leave it for the rest of the year and then launch in 2008. Oh, my It'll goodness. be so strong, though. We'll have all these shows to pick the best bits of. We'll record yeah. some new stuff. It'll be bionic. We're going to launch all the heck out of that uh, podcast, folks. You will not be disappointed. So just hang on in there. Uh, before the trail there, you heard Suburban Kids with Biblical Names. That I was good. You... Yeah, it was a good track, wasn't it? And it had whistling in it, which is very apposite, because this week's Song Wars, which we'll be doing in, in 20 or 30 minutes' time... Uh, is songs with whistling in them. It's That's more right. than that, but it does feature whistling. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I put an extra little syllable in there. That was good. Thank it you. It made the word different. Thank you very much. Now, would you like to hear... No. No? What? Blur? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Here's a little session track for you. This was recorded way back in the good old days, 1999, when life was simpler. Uh, <laughs> terrorists were just a little glint in the eye of uh, Osama bin Laden. And um, that's not, no, that's necessarily true. Um, but uh, Blur, well, the Blur were past their prime <laughs> in those days, weren't they, really? It was They were slightly on the decline there. They were holding it together. How Graham, very rude. Graham Coxon was uh, furious. He was just about to leave. But still, they were together, and they just released their album 13, I think, around about this time. Uh, and they were playing... This, this is their Chrissy track, isn't it? Yeah, they were playing... Oh, yeah, so, so this wasn't this from was 13. This was big Christmas hit. But anyway, uh, this is from uh, Radio 1 Session, live at the Golders Green Hippodrome, March 1999. This is The Universal from Blur. There you go, that's the mighty Blur. <laughs> hey, well done, Blur, well oh, done. done. He's a good singer, though, isn't he? Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. I feel like I'm on the news when that jingle plays because we're stacking papers. That's right. It's getting our papers. texts ready and it's an exciting news style jingle. And now here is Text the Nation read yes. by Joe Cornish. <clears throat> Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. The subject of this afternoon's Text the Nation was ideas that you think you had before anyone else. I've just been going silent quite a lot this morning. It's my new trick. Well, it's not necessarily yours. That's an idea that I had before you. I, oh, you know, I used that last week. Brilliant. Now you're all over the uh, going silent before anyone else. Because, thing. of course, that's the theme of Text the Nation. Yeah. This week it's ideas that you, you're you sure, you're convinced you had first hmm. uh, before some big company stole it off of you and uh, basically stole your livelihood. That's right. Stole a potential fortune Ripped from you. your future away. That's right. Uh, and we got lots of very good ones. Um, I don't know where to start, but we'll start here with a, a text from Ellie. It says, Dear Adam and Joe, my husband is adamant that he coined the phrase Billy No Mates during a phone call with his friend Joff in 1988. 
I fear he is sadly delusional. Perhaps your listeners could offer proof of use of this phrase in print or other media prior to 1988. I like that because, on the one hand, it's very broad.、Mm -hmm. Billy No Mates. But on the other hand, she provides the name of the person who was being called、yeah. and the year, so that you know, within reason, it's checkable. But if it was applied to a specific person, actually called Billy. Yes. Then doesn't that、oh, you slightly? You think there's like a like a like an actual Billy, who was the first Billy to have that used against? Is、him? that not what she's implying?、Uh, no, because it was a phone call with his friend Joff. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> I misunderstood. It should have been Joffy No Mates. Yeah, yeah.、Um, well, that's quite possible. If anyone can find evidence of the use of that phrase before 1988, don't bother about it. <laughs> Leave it to yourself. Here's another one、um, from Lisa in Stockton on Tees. Uh, while picking up a particularly soft dog poop,、uh, it was my dog's in bracket. I invented in my mind dog poo freeze spray, but did nothing about it. I was in a pet shop last week, and there on the shelf next to poo pickup bags,、uh, neither Adam or I have dogs. This is a world we don't really know or understand,、mm -hmm. but some of you out there do, and you go around picking up their their, their nonsense, pops. their pops.、Uh, on the shelf next to poo pickup bags was my product called only freeze spray. Right there, you go. Poo freeze. Yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, that's a little bit like the plot for a whole film, which is about this very thing, which was not a very successful film.、Uh, with who is the director of、uh, Tin Men?、Um, Barry Levinson. Barry Levinson. He did a thing with Jack Black, all about someone who,、uh, and it was Jack Black and. Is it called Evil?、Uh, no, no, it was Envy or something or something. Envy.、Like、that. It was called Envy. Was it Ben Stiller even? Yeah, yeah. yeah and one of them, one of them invents a spray that just vaporizes dog poo, and then、ah. the and. Then the other one reckons that he had the idea、You're、first,、right. or, and they go off, and they、uh, one of them makes a million. And anyway, it's all about this very thing. Here's one that I like for its simple brevity and power.、Uh, it, it's an anonymous one. I developed the idea for Die Hard many years ago before it came <laughs> out. But hey, I'm not bitter. Tim painting his house and cursing Bruce Willis. Yeah, I developed the idea for Die Hard. That man. <laughs> what do you mean, develop the idea for Die Hard? I wonder what the idea. Well, presumably it what was. What about a film with a bloke? Divorced from his wife, <laughs> going to visit her, get the papers signed. She gets kidnapped by terrorists at the office party. Call it something like Nakatomi Towers. Yeah. And、uh, the terrorists. <laughs> no, never mind. No, he sneak in there and、uh, he says "Yippee ki yay, mother frangler."、Yeah. That's his catchphrase. Fancy a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs>、um, well done, Tim. You must be gutted about that. You、mate. must be gutted. Uh, Here's an idea that I had a long、mm. time ago, right? And I swear I've got I've got the drawings to prove this. When I was twelve. I was thinking, you know, an obvious thing that doesn't exist in the world is a utensil that is a combination of a spoon and a fork. All you have to do is you have a spoon, but on one side of the spoon there are ridged fork-like prongs. You know what I mean?、Mm, so that、mm, you have the、mm. benefits of both the spoon and the fork. I was going to call it the foon. <laughs> Uh, that's where I went wrong because, of course, now that exists. You go to a camping shop, and it's easy to find a spork.、Mm. Uh, every every camping shop will have a spork, but I invented them. Well, some ideas are kind of、uh, obvious is the wrong word, but、um, like conjoined words or a simple juxtaposition of two things that already exist. Yeah,、uh, a lot of people will have the idea. That's right.、It、happens a lot in 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 art and.、Uh, You know, writing and stuff,、yeah. doesn't it? Just a dramatic idea. But the successful people are the people that go out and actually act on it. You know. Yeah, exactly. So we'll have some more of your texts about ideas that you had first、uh, coming up later on in the show.、Uh, but right now, here are the.、Uh, I, how do you pronounce it? Is it scatterlights or scatterlights? Scatterlights. Scatterlights. Okay, with ball of fire. Hmm. That's that's cribs. Is it just cribs or the? Cribs? No, it's the cribs, and it's called men's knees. Men's knees. I would have listened to that a bit closer if I'd known that was what it was called. He doesn't I've really. I've got knees. Yeah, I do.、Too. I need men's. Yeah, exactly. So do I. I need men's, and、uh, that's from the album Men's Needs, Women's Needs, whatever. Whatever, whatever. That's good, man. I enjoyed that. The cribs. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music.、Mm. We've got a whole load of exciting things going on that you, the listeners, can get involved with. It's true, isn't it? There's almost too much. There's text the nation on the theme of ideas that you think you've had that other people have stolen.、Mm -hmm. There's song wars coming up, which we want your votes for.、Uh, you can choose the theme of next week's song wars.、Oh、my lord. You can suggest a theme for next week's text the nation. Yeah. It's so interactive. I almost wonder why we bother coming in. 
Say, I do too. Do you too? Yes, I do too. Yes, I do too. Ah, do do too. We're going to be launch launching lunching. We're going to be lunching. We're going to be lunching later on, and we thought maybe you could come along. But also, <laughs> we're we're going to be launching this week's song wars in just a second, or rather. We're going to be... I, I'm confused. Man. Don't worry, man. It's confusing because we're about to play a Kate Nash song and it's sending out weird nuclear right. waves hey, of before, oddness. Hey, before the Kate Nash song, let me tell you... Let me tell you a little story. Okay. Okay. I'm going to tell a whole story in this voice. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is something that happened to a friend of mine. I'm going to change all the names just in case of sensitivity. Uh... But uh, let's call them Oscar and Leo, okay? Mm. My friend Oscar, he, uh, about uh, seven, eight years ago, he was walking along the street one day in uh, London town, and he saw uh, a, a kind of sale going on in some groovy part of town of Camden, somewhere like that, and there was some an artist just selling his some crappy little T-shirts and bits of paintings and stuff that he'd done on bits of all wood and cardboard and anyway he snapped one of them up because he thought it was sort of funny um can you tell where this is going it's going to be amazingly valuable well it was a it was a, a spray spray on thing of it's like banksy. it's banksy it's ba the bankster he bought a, a sort of a little piece of banksy for his mate uh leo and it was uh he paid about 80 quid for it and he gave it mm -hmm. to leo as a birthday present about eight years ago Anyway, Leo had it valued the other day because, mm. of course, uh, Banksy's in the news now. How much do you reckon from 80 quid? This is just a well, little... Ten, tens of thousands, I imagine. Is, this how, is a, how big is it? Uh, it's small. It's like a tiny, crappy little thing. It's literally on a piece of old rubbish. Well, then probably cardboard. not tens. His, at his LA exhibition, they were selling for, you know, hundreds of thousands, right. weren't they? 50,000 pounds. Mm. 50 grand mm. from uh, an 80 quid investment mm. in a little, little bit of Banksy. Wow. How cool is that? And here's the nice part of the story, right? Because this is when you get into, uh, you know, it could have been me territory. What's that yeah. film with um, Nick Cage? Yeah. It could happen to you. Yeah. Anyway, Leo uh, found out how much it was worth, and now he's going to split the money with um, Oscar, who gave it Oscar. to him. Oscar. Isn't that nice? Just write down the real names. 50-50. I'll tell you the real names while we're listening to Kate Nash. Not this you, is me. Pumpkin Soup. Kate Nash uh, with a track called Pumpkin Soup. Is that really called Pumpkin Soup? Yeah, that's confusing, isn't it? It is. She doesn't sing about pumpkin no soup. Pumpkin or did soup I miss it? Mentioned. No, it's all about wanting someone's kiss. Yeah, that's not bad. It's a slightly less um, irritating than the last one. <laughs> that's very nice. A little bit of damning with faint praise there. Well, Joe you know, I'm just uh, acknowledging some people's hmm. feelings because it's very catchy. Yeah. But sometimes things that are catchy in a simple way become irritating. That's right. Even like, though they have innate goodness. That's they get, just get overplayed. Like us. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, there we go. Uh, listen, I've just got an important uh, email from Joel Hughes, who sent in the suggestion for my song right. last week. It says, Morning, it's Joel Hughes here from last week's Song Wars. Just woke up. Did we win? Oh, oh Joel, man, we didn't. Sorry to say, Joel, but you were trounced. We were trounced. 75% to 25%. James Rohan, Neanderthal Man, won. And, uh, but now we have an entirely new set of songs for you in this week's Song Wars. Play that jingle. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't oh, warn Ben about that. Sorry, did I didn't warn Ben. I threw Adam him just there. pointed at him as if he was going to set it going. Here we go. It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. So check it out. Yes, indeedy. And this week, uh, or rather last week, we told you that... Did we? I can't remember. It's so confusing. What? No, no, no. This week, the um, songs were about... Uh, they they had to incorporate the following elements. You yes. had to be a sincere. Yes, because we were having a discussion about how both Adam and I tended to sort of rap our songs because yeah. we were a bit embarrassed about actually singing or do silly voices and stuff. Yeah, yeah, in a sincere way. So we decided that this week's song we'd both try and sing in a sincere way. So we had to pick a a subject that we could be sincere and passionate about, and that subject is global warming yeah climate change mm. uh mm. and that kind of thing mm. and also the other element because we were listening to that peter bjorn and john track um what's it called young again? folks young folks there you go with the uh wonderful whistling there and we thought that's the way to get a hit you know we've got to get some whistling mm. so it had to be sincere it had to be about uh climate change and it had to incorporate whistling mm. how do you think you've done on those three elements there joe mm, i don't know no, i'm not that confident this week how's the sincerity uh the sincerity's 
Mm, it's it's <laughs> i don't know man you be the judge of that it's very difficult isn't it i mean i, I mean even even trying to be sincere i was my lyrics about global warming about mm. climate change are pretty much from the heart and i was thinking back like they're sort of embarrassing because they're so stupid do you try stupid but i am a bit stupid do you try and sing i are do try I'm, I'm really trying to the sing truth. my my right. knackers off right, right. yeah yeah uh, so anyway, should we play the songs? Uh, who who wants to go first this week? Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Um, what the hell? Um, yeah, this is my song. It's kind of, it's just called the Global Warming Song. I'm no good with naming the songs. No, mine is called Sincere Whistling Eco Song. Uh, that's more imaginative yeah. than my title. Uh, and this is kind of in the style of the Kings of Convenience. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of ballady and noodly. Mm -hmm. It has some whistling, um... Uh, and it's also got the the sound of a distressed polar bear. Oh, I thought about polar bears. Did as well. you? Yeah, I've got a lyrical nod. Uh, so this is this is my track. This is called the the global warming song. No, 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 no Ben, stop, wrong. stop, Ooh, Ben. That's the wrong one. Oh, Ben, that could have been ben, disastrous. Ben, 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 ben. Have you got the right one now? Okay, this is this is my song, Joe's song. It's called the the global warming song. The world is dying. We will all be frying Extreme weather, species extinction But don't worry about it It might not be true Really? Seriously? A channel for documentary Said everything might be cool I saw that documentary A channel for might be lying Channel 4 is gratuitously provocative after all, the public's trust in TV is dying. But Peter, Ant and Tech, who can we trust anymore? And when spring comes early, should I be happy or sad? I don't know, it's confusing. Is the fact that it's sunny a good thing or a bad thing? The coyotes of protocol. The government said it's so low, it's appalling, appalling, appalling. Build more airports, why don't you? I've got eco light bulbs, and I try to take the train. But the sea's still rising, and the polar bears feel pain. There we are. That's the global warming song. Wow, that's mm. good, man. You, uh, I've got a few of those themes in there lyrically. I bet. It's, it's similar. <laughs> I didn't go for Al Gore though. I tried to hold myself back on that one. Madeley, what's Madeley? Madeley done? does the extreme weather program. He profits from global warming <laughs> while the world suffers. He's coining it. You have raised your game there, man. Do you think? You have raised... That took me less time than any other your... song. No. Ago. Did yeah. it? That's my favourite one of all the ones you've done. I really phoned that one in. That was good. Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Do you think? I'm in a little bit of trouble. It doesn't bode well. But I've gone... Uh, musically, I've gone in a totally different direction, though. Uh, you're going to need to really put some volume beef into this, Ben. Um, and mine is called the Sincere Whistling Eco Song. Check it out. <laughs> Like 
to drink out of a plastic cup The world will be a desert Or maybe under ice I can't remember which it is But it will not be nice <gasps> There might be time If we change our ways for ways At least that's what the scientific community says Although it is confusing Cause sometimes we disagree But changing our behavior Should be good for you and me So people stop the whistle And think about the future People stop the whistle And think <laughs> and it's very low down. Add some orchestral it's, um, things in there. Did you put that to the backing track together, or is that one that comes no, packaged? No, no, that was uh, the, the the little. Uh, I think it's called Island Reggae. That bip 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 bip. That yeah. that, that was prepackaged. The rest of it that's original. Really, Buxton skills. I, the, what, what I liked <laughs> one of the, one of the many things I liked about that was that this, the <laughs> lyrics and whistling just stopped for quite long periods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was good, man. Thank you. It showed a confidence, and both of us hitting there, the, the rising sea levels and the polar bears, obviously one of both of our chief concerns. And also, you know, talking about the the fact that there is uh, still a little controversy there's very yeah. there's no controversy about the fact we that can't the climate be sure how to feel is changing mm. but scientists are still disagreeing on key points mm, you know so listen your job uh, please it's not really a job we're, we're asking you please please <laughs> do it help us doctor is to text and, and and let us know which of those songs you think is the better one uh text 64046 during the show vote adam or joe um or while the song's off, if you're listening to this, what? While the show's off, if you're listening to this uh, on Listen Again, uh, you can email Adam and Joe dot uh, six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Yes, there you go. Uh, now, do we have time for another track before the news? Yes. Okay, Joe. This is one that I think you chose. Well, that's nice. It's a bit of cheap trick. Yeah, this is great. This is from uh, my favourite film ever, uh, Over the Edge, directed by um, Jonathan Kaplan. It's by an American band from the seventies called Cheap Trick. Uh, and it's called Surrender. Cheap Trick with Surrender. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's time for the news, read by Ruth Barnes and Harvey Cook. There you go, that's The Shins with Sea Legs. That's going to be their new single released on December the 3rd from their album Wincing the Night Away, which you should really get if you haven't got already. Wincing the Night Away? Wincing. Wincing? Yeah. Wincing. How do you wince the night away? Yeah, you just go, Painful. oh dear, oh dear. You just oh. wander around going, ooh. Why, because you're in the company of embarrassing people? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. It's socially awkward, you know? It sounds a bit aloof of the shins. They are a little bit aloof. Are they? I yeah. mean, they spend the whole evening wincing at other people's behaviour. That's what they're going to be doing. They're going to be going around going, oh, I don't belong here. I'm a creep. I'm a weirdo. What am I doing here? I don't belong here. You know, it's a classic theme for the indie popsters. It's true. But uh, what an amazing song and what a fantastic band. You should. That's one of the. It's one of my albums of the year, Joe. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, Wincing and I were. Thank you, Christy. It's Text the Nation time. Thanks to everybody who's been texting in. We're going to catch up with some of your texts about ideas uh, you believe have been stolen from you or that you had first and then have appeared, sponsored and marketed by someone else who's coining the cash that should be yours. This is one from Richard Flight. Mm hmm. Uh, and he's in the climber's shop. Did we have someone else texting from the climbing shop? He was the web guy from the climber's shop before who texted, I think. Well, we're reading out another one from him then. Okay. Hi, Adam and Joe. On the subject of having ideas before they were popular, when I was a kid, the wallpaper in my parents' toilet, the room, not the toilet itself. Right. Who papers a toilet? No, exactly. Was a repetitive pattern of some flower or other. I happened to notice one day that if you weren't focusing on the wall itself, they sometimes all converged and started to look three-dimensional. Huh? I thought at the time how cool that was, and I used to do it a lot whilst revealing myself. I even tried to make some drawings that did the same thing and became three-dimensional. Well, obviously I was just a kid, didn't have a fully formed marketing plan, so forgot about it. Lo and behold, a few years later, magic eye pictures were magic all the rage. Eye. Every kid had one on their bedroom wall, and every spare person was selling them on street corners damnation that's right that's a nice way of c categorizing the people that sell things like that as well what well, spare people <laughs> well he didn't use the word people <laughs> he used a word that i'm not sure i can say on radio <laughs> almost certainly not yeah. that's a good one thanks for that yeah uh dean mitchell from trowbridge the gateway to the gateway to bath 
Well, whose phone was that? Don't think it was mine. Mine just buzzes. Oops. <laughs> Uh, Dean says, I was the first person in the world to attach card with pegs to my rally tomahawk and latterly my chopper. No. It made a clicking noise which sounded a bit like a moped, but not really. You're insane. People have been doing that since the 50s, for goodness sake. Do you think? Yes. Dean reckons it was him. It wasn't you, Dean. <laughs> but that's a good example of someone <laughs> with an inflated sense of significance. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, definitely. Uh, here's what David Oldham offers us, uh, or his name's Dave, offers us three ones. Uh, here's my favourite of the three. My brother has been known to write short stories in the postmodern slash Paul Auster style. <laughs> I wouldn't know what that was. You've never read any Paul Auster? No. New York Trilogy, wasn't that his? Does he write for Heat magazine? No. Well, in that case, I'm not familiar he with it. He can't. He can't. He sends them stuff, but they will not publish they it. They won't do it. Um, he's brilliant. He writes really clever stuff. Uh-huh. And you should read a book. I'm going to go and They're find fun. one of the... Where, where, where do you find these uh, books? There's stations stations train stations okay, yeah i'm gonna go into a train station uh, he writes kind of very kind of intellectual you know postmodern, but brilliant really good stories mm. but they're always profoundly meaningful and amazing connections and, and stuff about about tramps who are actually millionaires and that sort of business is it like <laughs> is it like roald dahl it's like the channel 4 series the secret millionaire <laughs> okay good yeah he once told me the outline of a story he was working on it was about a girl who is ignored by friends and colleagues after being ignored for so long she eventually becomes invisible yeah yeah that's good that is good uh, he's, she's sort of erased by people ignoring her. Right. Yeah. He'd got the whole thing planned out. He was going to write it up. He looked gutted when I told him that what he just described was an episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. I know that he can't have nicked it from Buffy because his girlfriend considers Buffy porn and won't let him watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right. That is very frustrating when you have that, that kind of synchronous thing. You're just not aware of the fact that this is going on in the world already. I remember when I was at college, I was uh, doing a lot of kind of goofy parodies of the news and it was all about the delivery of the news, you mm. know, the way newsreaders spoke. I remember that, pre-day to day. Yeah, and... Uh, and then, of course, in, I, I wasn't listening to the radio at the time, but if I had been, I would have known that Chris Morris and Amanda Inucci were doing uh, the radio version of the day-to-day, -day, which was called On the Hour. And that was pointed out to me by my tutor at college, who suggested that I acquaint myself with what was going on in the world. And, of course, they were doing it slightly better. Oh, dear. Here's another one from Kerry McNabb. Uh, dear Adam and Joe, firstly, it's marvellous to hear you on the airwaves again. Just had to read that. That's nice, nice, isn't it? Uh, but I have to rant. My flatmate and I had the idea for the film Run, Fat Boy, Run, way before Peg came up with it. <sighs> we not only wrote our idea down, but also cast it as well. Then, lo and behold, it was made without our consultation, which is rude. This is like the lady who was on uh, Dragon's Den the other day. <laughs> with her bizarre film idea. <laughs> yeah. You know... She, uh, they cast it as well, what they were going to cast Peg. Swimmer. Didn't Swimmer come up with that? Peg rewrote the script. I'm not sure that, that Peg came up with the actual idea. Hmm. It was set in America, then Then he wrote, rewrote it for England. Right. But, uh, yeah, that's frustrating. I haven't seen Run, Fat Boy Run, have you? No, still haven't seen it. It was. It did very well, it didn't did it? did extremely well, it's yeah. It's the peg factor, man. He's gold, that guy. He's gold. Everything he touches. Yeah, there you go. Um, so we have a few more of these a bit later on. Yeah. We'll wrap that up in a second. Uh, but uh, right now, here is uh, the Queens of the Stone Age. This reminds me that we haven't replied to Zane's invitation yet, have you? Zane Lowe's party yeah. invitation? No. Um, He's going to be. This is, one, uh, this is one of his favourite bands. My email's been down. That's my excuse. Anyway, here's Queens of the Stone Age. Enjoy it. That's the Queens of the Stone Age with Make It Wit Chew. Mm -hmm. Does that mean Chewbacca? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. He it's, wants to make love to Chewbacca. He wants to have a little hairy snog with a Wookiee. Yeah, I wouldn't go further than a snog because they're violent animals. Their uh, mating habits are, are quite bizarre. No, I don't even want to think about the implications. I wouldn't, but take it from me they have, <laughs> they have to uh shampoo all over afterwards yeah yeah a yeah wookie. uh now joe i know that you're not a fan of i'm a celebrity get me out of here mm, that's Just, true despite the fact that you know anton deck present it it's true they're brills i love anton deck you know i do my best to dislike them because it seems to be like that's what a, a sort of cynical person would do but i can't do it because they're good, man. I like them. They're, they're amusing. Mm. I chuckle at all their lame gags. Mm. They do a good job on that program. You, do you remember I ran into them in Los Angeles earlier in the year? Did you? Yeah, in a restaurant. How was that? Uh, which one's which? Ant is the taller of the two yeah, with a slightly looked, more dome-like head. He looked head. depressed. Yeah. He didn't say much. He fixed me with a slightly surly gaze. Did he? Uh, the other one... A deck. Declan. ...was really lovely. He's the... Uh, I'm not saying that that's their characters, but just at that particular moment. Yes. 
Ah, uh, tall ones seemed quite tired. I think Ant, yeah, Ant is more volatile, I get yeah. the impression. They were sitting in silence. Well, I'm sure they're talked Slightly out. Slightly odd. The restaurant was quite empty and they were sat there in complete silence. Well, like a married couple. With a blonde lady. Probably like what you and me would be like mm. if we were in LA in a restaurant. Mm. What would we say to We'd each other? We'd be excited. There'd We'd be, no... be unwrapping DVDs and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. flicking through Max. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, it wasn't that in deck that I was going to talk about, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, everybody's been talking about this if they have been watching the show, but Mark Bannerman, I didn't even know who this guy was last week, but do you remember I mentioned the fact that I was concerned for his girlfriend because there was a burgeoning romance on the program between EastEnders star, as I now understand that he is, Mark Bannerman, and Keris Matthews, former singer of Catatonia, who's been on the show and they were flirting like nobody's business for the first week out there and it was really uh, sort of uh, pretty sexy steamy stuff N nothing actually happened okay N nothing more extremely physical than a hug here and there but there were some very lingering looks going on and you could really tell that they felt uh, something intense was happening intense and spiritual was going on and of course the program makers edited it to make it look like it was more or less a done sexy deal yeah mm. so i was worried for the girlfriend of mark bannerman i don't think keris is in a relationship at the moment but mark bannerman was and i was thinking man this guy's gonna pay the price when he gets out sure enough this week he was the first to be booted out and uh not waiting for him there was his girlfriend who had flown out a few days before not waiting no. for him she didn't show up she'd gone out to australia a few days before but while she was on the plane things had got even steamier so when she arrived in australia she was confronted with a load more steamy footage and what uh, sort of thing had been happening the, the looks had got even more lingering the toad had I mean? gone in the hole no no there was no whole toad action uh it was just that it was the writing was very much on the wall you know really? and, he was, and he was even saying to the, the other members of the camp you know i think i'm in real trouble i think i'm really in, in so many words he was saying i think i'm falling in love with her you know with the welsh songstress yeah with the popstrel um i'm never gonna say popstrel again in my Good. life Good. um but you know at first when when his girlfriend turned up i think she's called sarah at the airport and there was loads of paparazzi mm. around her all snapping away she seemed fairly upbeat to the extent that i thought maybe it's not even a real relationship do you know what i mean maybe maybe he was just saying like look pretend to be my, it's my all girlfriend a it's and, a panto and you yeah and you can Blood come out vena whispers can, to the contestants you can stay in a hotel but i don't think that's true i think mm. she just didn't realize how steamy it had gotten anyway by the time he was ejected she had left she had got on a plane no. and gone back she wasn't having any more of it so he gets out of the show and uh, sits down with Ant and deck to have the prosprandial chat and have the glass of champagne and look back at some clips and be all upbeat about it mm. and he's like where's sarah and they said she's flown back and he was absolutely ashen faced mortified to the extent that he couldn't really indulge in any of the l upbeat banter, banter. Mm. He couldn't do anything. They were saying, so, give us some gossip from the camp. He's like, mate, I can't. I can't. I've embarrassed her. I've embarrassed myself. So they had to fill, like, half an hour of telly. Uh, they had to they, they had to do a little bit of filling. They had lots of packages they could throw to, but the packages compounded his uh, mortification because no. he saw the way he'd come across. And I've never seen anything so viscerally real on TV for quite some time. This guy was totally destroyed. In I felt, terms of his emotional reaction? Yeah. I felt bad for him. I mean, obviously, he'd behaved like a bit of a prat. Uh, in some ways, but on the other hand, he didn't, he, he was clearly gutted. And he, not only that, but the weeks were stretching ahead of him. The idea that not only could he not enjoy the, the hotel and everything that's laid on for them out there, he had to get right back on the plane and head back to what was going to be up. a pretty miserable Patch time. Adams. Yeah, do some serious Patch Adams work. And then, uh, later on, I went over to ITV2 and they had Matt Willis from Busted, who won last year presenting. Right. And he got a little interview with Mark Bannerman. But Matt Willis was in no way equipped to deal with the raw levels of emotion. So he was saying, so how was it? And he's like, mate, I can't even talk to you now. I've got, I've got to get on a plane. I've got a phone call to make. I'm in real trouble. He's like, yeah, yeah. But I mean, funny stories or anything? I can't. Look, I just can't. And Matt Willis was totally wow. in trouble because he did the rawness was too intense. I've got to see that. I've got to YouTube that. Yeah, yeah. I was, it was a pretty extraordinary moment. Anyway, there you go. Now, here's a track uh, from The Fall that I've chosen for you listeners after that uh, long diversion into the jungle. I hope you enjoy this. Is, this is from uh, their album, The Unutterable, and they're never less than interesting, The Fall. And uh, 
sonically, orally, hourly, this is sort of weird for the full, very electronic-y, but I like it particularly because it ends with Marky e. Smith sort of reading from what appears to be an article about the DJ Pete Tong. So he starts reading out little facts about Pete Tong from this article, about what he carries around with him in his purse or whatever, uh, to the extent that he sort of cracks himself up while he's reading it. Hope you enjoy it. This is called Dr. Buck's Letter by the Fall. Very exciting. Mm. The Arctic Monkeys uh, with a track called Teddy Picker. Do you remember when we first heard about the Arctic Monkeys? You came into the studio when we were back at XFM and you uh, had an article that you cut out and you said, look at this, the, the, these guys, can you believe there's a band called the Arctic Monkeys? Did I? Yeah. And you said, oh, I've been reading all this hype about them, I'm sick of them already, I haven't Did even I? heard a bit of their music yet. Yeah, and we were both pouring scorn all over the notion. We were stupid. We were stupid because they turn out to be Wickles. What a couple of idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Wickle Wackles. I forgot about that. Yeah, there you go. Um, it is a bad name for a band, though, still. I like it. Do you? Yeah. You're not used to it now. They don't exist. They couldn't survive in the Arctic. I thought they were Arctic monkeys. They do exist. Like, they can survive in the Arctic. <laughs> Maybe not in the Arctic, but, uh, like, I'm thinking of that film, is it... I like to say the sea. Power cut sea? Arctic. Arctic. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's fun nice, to say it's that nice way. and hard in there. Mm. Power cut sea or, uh, one of those films. No, it's, it's, uh... Pukwa uh, and Uh, Boraku. Bokororu. Buraka. Borat. Buraka. You know, it's one of the films about uh, with long shots of sunsets and people sure, on escalators yeah. and stuff. Ka and Kwa yeah, Power Katsi and Kwanitsu. I think it's Boraka, the tree people, or whatever it was. That's got a, one, a monkey it, with ice on its head, and it's in a it's in a lake that's peeking out of yeah. a freezing. Borat should do a film like that. That's a good idea. Borat's Gonkowski. <laughs> <laughs> He'd just be wandering around in, like, uh, Mexican salt mines. Are there salt mines in Mexico? Oh, we can find <laughs> some for you. I we don't know what we're talking about. This is Adam and Joe on BBC uh, Six Music. We should probably wrap up Text the Nation now. Could we just have the Text the Nation jingle one more time there? Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. This is a, a, an email sent from GP. What? From your GP. His name's Giles Pocklington, but he shortens it to GP. He's a GP. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Dear Adam and Joe, this is a list of things I'm sure I thought of years before they appeared in the marketplace. Number one, the hard drive video recorder. <laughs> I told my mum about my great idea when I was 13, 23 years ago. Maybe my mum sold her son's idea to Enormo Corp, but I haven't experienced any trickle down yet. Wait a second. Hard drive video what mm. would, So what would his description have been then? Uh, recording video images onto a computer hard disk. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. But back 23 then. 23 years ago. 23, he reckons. Yeah. I think that's a lie. Because also it would have been meaningless. Did you hear back that, then. GP? GP, I'm not Boxing having it. Is calling you a liar. Because what would I don't understand what your idea would have been? Because it would have been totally meaningless. You needed the capacity. You're and picking back, a fight with GP. Back then, like a big computer back then was about 200 megabytes of space. Yeah, you but know you what I mean. Still come up with a premise. Yeah. Right, hold off on your anger. Okay. Here's the second one. Doggett, the yogurt for dogs. <laughs> this started out as a weak joke. <laughs> Actually, a spin-off from my cat cheese idea. <laughs> but that's a good idea. But then I thought that <laughs> dog owners are generally so soppy that they would buy this. Again, someone has stolen my brainwaves, and he includes a picture of a dog with a four-pack of Doggett. There you go. That's a good idea, man. Uh, you know, and the fact that he says it's a weak joke... Yeah. Uh, self-effacing, admitting, you know, that that weakness, to me, strengthens the probability that the hard disk recorder is true. I think he's, I think he's honest with himself. He's a vision, maybe he's a visionary like Dr. Nakamatsu. Maybe, and you just can't <laughs> accept it. Yeah. Idea number three, I also had an idea about a mesh that could be woven into an aircraft's fuselage, which could tell the pilot if any damage had occurred on the plane, based on my own extensive experience of building Lego fighter planes. Next year, it appeared on Tomorrow's World. And I'd like to say that he puts an apostrophe before the P of plane. Uh -huh. Which again is attention to detail that to me suggests that this. You do that as well, don't you? Right you put an apostrophe in front it's of phone. It's correct English. Yeah. Do I? In yeah, front of phone. Phone. I'm cool. <laughs> uh, and I think I get on very well with uh, GP. GP, I believe all of that. Man, GP, act on some of these ideas, guy. For goodness sake. Yeah, the next one, do it. Yeah. Seriously. Patent it. Here's one from Steve Banjo. Stevie Banjo. Stephen Banjo. <laughs> Three years ago, I was at a lavish corporate drinks do and ended up chatting to the director of communications for McDonald's. I got really rather drunk and Larry and began telling him that I knew McDonald's marketing strategy at the time was all wrong, mate. All about trying to convince us how healthy McD's was. They do salads, lower salt content, etc., etc. Rubbish. You're barking up the wrong tree. It's not healthiness that'll get your average middle class taxpayer into Mickey D's. I said it's quality. People don't expect a burger to be healthy. They just want it made out of proper meat. 
okay right so instead of trying to convince us to, it's healthy which will never work just add a completely premium burger to the menu i argued you could get aberdeen angus steak even you've got the supply chain the contacts the farmers the marketing the outlets everything you need it'd be easy all you do is buy good steak meat cook it properly slap it on the menu for 5.99 if you just had that one burger on the menu, I'd go to McDonald's. You can call it, I said in a moment of inspiration, the McAngus. And they have one. Yeah, he didn't listen to me, but one year later I was walking down Queensway and was arrested by a massive banner in the window of McDonald's. But I'm having to skip bits that are quite rude about McDonald's. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh no, it's in Burger King, the bur in the window of Burger King. Knew that Angus burger made with Aberdeen Angus steak meat. There you go. So Mickey D didn't even pay attention when a gift horse was looking him in the mouth. He probably mentioned it drunkenly to the Burger King guy. Right. At one of the secret the burger meetings. The clown got wasted yeah, the, and he was the, staggering over. The Muck Bohemian Grove. He went over to the king and the king was mm. there looking creepy at the ATM or whatever and he just mentioned the Angus idea. Well, you shouldn't be giving ideas to evil corporations, you know? Yeah, it's true. Speaking. You should be trying to bring them down. Yeah, like Mark Thomas, speaking of which. <laughs> Did you see the Coke thing? Here's another one from Peter Green and Seward Zen, Saffron Walden. Dear Adam and Joe, my brother unashamedly claims to have invented the noise and insult that you make when you're challenging someone's mental ability. You know, the noise you make when you push your tongue into the front of your mouth. It's called a, a, a meher. It's called a meher below your bottom lip and make the noise <laughs> it's a great relief to him that no money has ever been made from it that's quite common you know thinking you've thought of a phrase or a joke first like i'm convinced i thought of mickey bubbles for michelle buble yes i think you did the too. singer yeah but then he i saw him hosting the paul o'grady show and he was using it himself i bet he heard it off you do you think definitely do you think i was the first to say mickey bubbles? you certainly the first that i heard mm. i remember when you said that first and i thought joe's clever i like him <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh there we go well that's we do have more we might come back uh, to them if we have any more brilliant ones you can still text 64046 or email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk don't forget we're looking for your ideas for song wars next week plus any suggestions for text the nation next week basically just write the show if you want to present it <laughs> give us a call do my i need a cleaner yeah um, I, I need a haircut i need a some kind of nutritionist as well uh, I tell you the other thing I need. My email's gone down. If anyone could sort that out, I phoned up yeah. the. Uh, I like sn snogging attractive people. Yeah. Anyone who wants a snog? Nude photos, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and just send us anything. That would be ideal. Uh, right now, here is a song. This is the first single I ever bought, Joe Cornish. Oh no, what's it going to be? It's Craftwork with Ooh. the model. That's a different version to the one I've got on my Greatest Hits collection. I think that might be a live version, might it? Our notes here say recorded for dot 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 so it might be a oh uh, right a, a session version. thing yeah there you go that was like, xtc with mm -hmm. life begins at the hop and before that you heard craft work with the model yeah you know when people say the hop it reminds me of the walton hop mm. you know what happened there yes we do mm, yes, we creepy do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. um this is adam and joe on bbc six music the station where music matters how much though a great deal oh what would what would it do for music anything would it if if there was a problem with the music they it would do its own music yeah would it get in a fight for the music yeah really yeah to the death yeah oh my lord yeah it's actually a problem we wouldn't know would we uh we might have to yeah because oh, we work here that's scary hey listen um this week i went to see a film it's well exciting. done thank you very much i don't go to the films very often because of the uh children factor it's very hard to get out of the house but we made it to a special screening of a new film um that has a friend of ours in it the film is called no country for old men and it's the new film by the cohen brothers and the friend of ours that's in it is kelly mcdonald hang on when you say we and ours mm. who are you talking me and about? my my, my okay. beautiful wife okay uh so we went along and uh and checked it out it is wicked man Ooh, it's so good. Uh, and I'm not, like, the Coen brothers have had a run of slightly stinky films. They've had some problems with the Lady Killers. Yeah. Uh, they had I some problems. The lady yeah, killers. that was so bad it was almost invisible. Oh, my Lord. They had, a, they did a film that nobody even saw. There was one with Clooney and uh, Zeta Jones in it that That's I the saw. One. Oh, what was my it called? gosh. I can't even remember what it was called. It was just a disgrace. It was like a sort of romantic screwball comedy. Yeah and uh but it, they're back on form. it was shocking back on form in a big way mm. in a very big way and it's like 
fairly familiar territory for them. It's Fargonic. Yeah, it's very Fargonic. A lot of uh, thematically similar things going on there, and some of the extreme violence you feel as if uh, they've done before. But th but they've certainly put like an amazing new sheen on the whole thing and packed it with enough uh, new flourishes to make it well Charlie worth sheen. the visit. Unfortunately, he's not in it. He's not an amazing new sheen. I was disappointed by the lack of the amazing sheen. Where's his kids? Charlie's? Yeah. There should be a new generation of Sheens. There should be. Absolutely Mr. right. Mr. Sheen. Mr. Sheen. Get with it, Charlie. He's too busy being selfish, though, isn't he? It's true. To have children. Anyway, um, Josh Brolin is in it. He's sexy. And um, uh, the there's a guy in it called Javier Bardem. Are you familiar mm. with him? Yeah, I'm, yeah. He's a Spanish actor, right? What yeah. kind of stuff? Do you know what he's been in before? All sorts of films. He looks like a kind of chunkier, more thick-set Antonio Banderas. Yeah. Kind of heavily lidded eyes. He's hot right now. He's so hot right now. But he plays this this kind of um, pure psychopathic killer man mm. in this film. And it's it's like a, a classic villain being born right before your eyes you know what i mean he goes around and his motor stop around uh, well some of it's in the trailer okay so in the trailer you see that he goes around and he carries with him an oxygen tank with this um sort of air gun thing that's used to uh, kill cattle and stuff like that you know mm. they put it up to their mm -hmm. foreheads and bang mm. a bolt comes out and it just kills them instantly and this is what this guy uses to dispatch a lot of his victims right that's not new uh, who who else has used Michael that? Haneke's Benny's video. Really? There you go. Anyway, well, this th he cuts an amazing figure. You see this guy walking around. Does he go around with the oxygen tank in Benny's video? No. No. Well, this is what makes it so cool this time. And he's also got an amazing mad haircut, this guy. The Coen brothers have, like, got this incredibly sinister, creepy, long, fringe haircut. It's difficult to describe. It looks like a looks like a lady's wig that this guy's wearing, almost. And he's such... The ladies are creepy. They are creepy, aren't they? <laughs> and he's a frightening figure. Anyway, there's a brilliant bit in the film where... Uh, after an incredibly exciting and tense shoot up where a lot of people get injured and the injuries are really horrific in this film you see all the uh, misery of uh, gun i love to see the misery gunplay joe loves a bit of uh, gunplay misery where well, you'll be happy with this because mm. he gets badly shot in the leg right and there's Ouch. a great scene and it's it's like a sort of uh, he gets uh, peppered with um you know shot from a shotgun mm. kind of thing and he has to go and operate on himself you see that in itself is brilliant because yeah. most movies uh, don't bother with the repercussions cushions of injury yeah but when they do it's always a winner when rambo has to sew up his big stitch that's right that brilliant bit in um what's the Clooney uh wharf iraq war film three kings three kings when they show you the exact uh anatomy of a gunshot wound mm. do you remember that going bit? into the gut and yeah exactly yeah, because really septic. there's enough drama in just being shot once exactly and the subsequent uh, debilitation and pain that 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 would uh but it's it's a brilliant thing i love it in movies when people have to operate on themselves yeah you, and you and this is an all-time classic really of self-operation right mm. uh javier bardem sewing up his gunshot wound in no country for old men mm. is just excruciating where is the wound in the leg it's in the leg and he's brilliant because he's got like a, a real doctor's mind on him this guy's really smart so he knows exactly what to do he kind of uh breaks into a pharmacy gets all the equipment then goes home i like a sloppy self-operation no he's good man he's, he's good. good and you know another one who, that's similar is ronin do you remember that where de niro gets a gunshot wound i think there as well and he has to he basically has to lie on the table and instruct his mates how to extract the bullet and stuff wow uh and he's oh it's it's really painful it's one of my favorite self-operation really? shall i injure you if you could oh, you could operate on yourself that's what i was working I do around that to. to you for christmas yeah well maybe you could do it to me while we're listening to uh all the, right the pipettes I'll right this bar this is paul shapes there you go that's uh, paul shapes by the pipettes it's exciting isn't it it's like being tickled by schoolgirls it was very upbeat that's nice i know what it's like being tickled by schoolgirls i do and it's exactly like that song it's nice very hey, nice hey somebody texted in steve in uh leicester uh says let's not forget the swayze moment in roadhouse <laughs> where he stitches his own wound brilliant i love it you know uh i can't believe that joe says he hasn't seen that film not all the way through it's my way or the highway i've heard of its reputation oh it's a peach is it's it really a, yeah you can get that film for like one pound fifty or something on dvd wow it's well worth a look that's an enjoyable slice of swayze right there 
are some of my uh favorite operation moments in films i like the bit in day of the dead i like an operation where someone wakes up <laughs> yeah in a film i like the bit in day of the dead it's a zombie so it's not really a person but <laughs> he's on the table and his guts are open <laughs> he sits up <laughs> and all his guts fall out. oh dear oh, God, i remember that i like horrible. that bit um, there's a great German film called Autopsy. Actually, it's not great. It's rubbish. That's all about people being awake during operations. I mean, that is the most horrific thing that you could possibly imagine, isn't it? When you read stories about people who are conscious during their operations but unable mm. to say anything, <laughs> so they can hear all the sounds, they don't actually necessarily feel all the pain and oh, everything. This is unsuitable for early Saturday morning. Oh my lord! Terminator as well. I mean, he's a robot as well, but there's some very good self-operation in Terminator. That was the one. first and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we mentioned Rambo, of course. Total Recall as well. That kind of counts Stuffing when he... that thing up his nose. Yeah, we mentioned it the mm. other day, to get the thing out of his brain, the little... Mm. the beeper. It's good. And there's a great beeper moment in No Country for Old Men as it's well. It's very good. I'm having a sort of a, an idea about a group of surgeons. Uh -huh. Okay, have we got the news? I'll, I'll do the idea after the news. No, it's I'm a cliffhanger. I wanna, wait, no, wait, it's a cliffhanger. Teasing me news. about the surgeons. We're going to make money off of this. Okay, uh, it's coming up to half past eleven here on BBC Six Music. This is Adam and Joe. Half an hour left of our show, but right now, here is the news read to you by Harvey Cook. Ben Folds with Rock in the Suburbs. Uh, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We left you on a cliffhanger before the news. Joe was just about to reveal his amazing idea for a bit of self-surgery film action. Well, I think we can all agree that it's an exciting component in any feature film when somebody injures themselves and has to operate on it themselves. A bit of auto-surgery. So how about going with that idea and kind of building a whole film around it? My idea is for a film about a group of the world's top surgeons. Uh -huh. And they're flying in a private jet to a sur top surgeon conference. Right. Uh, they fly over some area of the Amazon yeah. that's inhabited by cannibals, oh. and the plane crashes. Yeah. So the top surgeons are stuck in the jungle, and they're attacked by the cannibals. I like it. Uh, they're really, they're, they're completely... Vicious. They're vicious, they're oh, cannibals. Yeah. They attack them in all sorts of new ways, injuring them in ways previously unknown. <laughs> the surgeons' surgery skills are pushed to the limit. And they're even attacked while they're doing surgery. <laughs> Some of them are separated. They have to. Uh, they've got all their equipment as well. So we're we're moving this whole genre beyond the you know needle and thread. Yes. Uh, stitching up a wound thing. It's like brain operations going on 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 one end of the body simultaneously reattaching a leg while another guy's reattaching the leg of the guy who's reattaching the leg. And the cannibal and the cannibals meanwhile are attacking. He's chewing on the he's toes. Chewing on the toes. There's not enough cameras to cover the action. <laughs> yeah. It's in IMAX and digital DT. Yes, I it's like it. It's amazing. I like it. I like it. Uh, you got the, a deal. It's a bit like uh, Alive meets Cannibal Holocaust. Yes. Uh, maybe that would be the pitch. Yes. Uh, meets, uh, what's a good surgeon film? Uh, can't think of any. Sammy the Surgeon. I had another idea for a <laughs> I love film. Sammy the Surgeon. Yeah, I had another idea for a film this week about a, uh, a like a stuntman. Hmm. Uh, and he gets in he's a very famous stuntman <laughs> he gets infected by a virus uh it's called resident evil knievel <laughs> and he um he gets he gets infected with a zombie virus yeah uh, but this makes him a more famous stuntman because he can do amazing stunts <laughs> right. and it doesn't matter because he's immortal he's a zombie but his manager has a tough time because he keeps trying to eat everybody wait a second isn't that mm. a bit what was the dreadful nick cage film uh the ghost rider yeah, not the same. It's got a little bit of that in it, though. It, 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 it's not one I will pursue. Immortal it's derivative of, uh, of of Hot Rod, and there's an Australian film called The Devil Made Me Do It about okay. a stuntman. It's too similar to a lot of other stuff out there. It's good stuff, though. You're it's sorted with it's the good surgeons. Enough for a radio link. We need a we need a title for the surgeons uh, film. <laughs> we couldn't think of anything immediately because you know Resident Evil can evil. You know, that's great stuff. Heal. It might be called he heal thyself. Heal thyself. You know. Yes, exactly. Something like that. Um, we thought uh, another good self-operation bit is in Apocalypto. There's a terrific little bit where th uh, the mother of a little boy sews up a wound in his arm or leg with <laughs> ants' heads. Yeah. She gets the ants to bite the wound together, and then she pulls the bodies off the ants, so just their heads are left. He's clever, that uh, anti-Semite, isn't he? That that uh, uh, Mel Gibbons. Yeah, he's the, brilliant. He is. A, he's brilliant. The genius racist. <laughs> yeah that's what i call him um and there's 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 lots more in fact somebody else uh mentioned the bit in pan's labyrinth where oh, captain medell sews up the side of his mouth pan's labyrinth was almost too much for me it's way too I'm much i'm a big fan of guillermo del toro's work i'm not a big 
massive fan of Pan's Labyrinth. It's good, it's imaginative stuff, but some of it is so Horrible. extreme, it's Grim. hard to justify. There's one bit in there where, if you've seen the film, you'll know what I'm talking about. It involves, uh, some face bashing. A and bottle in a, a man's bottle. face. One bit is the opening scene. It's the, w it's the most uh, upsetting bit of violence oh. that I've ever, ever seen in a film. It's really hard to take but uh pretty you know pretty good film mm. all in all it's a good film should we have a little bit of chirpy music now no okay then. okay yes uh are we gonna do what is this it's a trail are we gonna play right now for the ravenettes playing in the hub is that right interpol oh we're gonna do interpol i was i was excited about the trails and the news very upset to hear about bon j de role splitting i didn't know they'd formed no i don't know who they are i mean bon j de role is that a big band right now it's very upsetting for them but uh, anyway here's interpol that's interpol with number one in threesome this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music coming up to the end of our show. We've got less than a quarter of an hour left. I now. know, and we've got a lot to pack in, actually. We so do. let's get straight on with uh, reminding people who may have just tuned in of the two songs up for Song Wars this week. This is the part of the show where Adam and I compose uh, songs individually on a theme, and then you have to vote for which one you think is the best. This week's theme, it was a kind of three-pronged theme. It had to be sung sincerely, it was about global warming, and it had to have a whistling passage in it. Yeah. Uh, so let's start with mine. Uh, this is simply called the Global Warming Song, and it's done in the style of uh, the Kings of Convenience. I've got eco light bulbs, and I've tried to take the train, but the sea's still rising, and the polar bears feel pain. Now we were actually that that was just a little tease there but mm. but we I, I thought we were going to play the whole thing mm. should we we should play the whole thing we should we? play the whole thing yeah so, mm. so oh here we go There we go. How much more sincere than that can you get? That was good. It starts with a real sucker punch about and you the world say, dying. You say you phoned that one in, man. I can't believe that. Those I harmonies try, I and try stuff. Hard. Nah, top of the head. No way. Yeah. Some of the, sometimes the best stuff just comes out no. like that. So there we go. If if, if you like that one, then uh, vote Joe. Text six four zero four six, or if you're listening again, uh, email Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Uh, it's that song versus this song, now, Adam's song. Yeah, this is the sincere whistling eco song, and I've taken a different tack musically. This is more of a pop approach to the whole problem. No. 
I never meant to hurt you and I'm not the only one I was flying to the beach, I was driving just for fun Won't you listen to me whistle while I'm dying in the sun Oh, people stop you whistling and think about the climate People stop you whistling and think about the earth People stop you whistling and think about destruction whistling yeah boy i layer everything up yeah because if you got a weak voice i'm not saying you do you you're a good singer but uh Thanks, man. my voice isn't really uh, you know i'm no tom york so i have to layer it up about five times <laughs> before i get any tunefulness out of it so those are the songs to choose from listeners on this week's song wars uh text adam or joe to six four zero four six or if you want to vote after the show ends then email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk now here's a track that i've chosen for you friends this is from uh um, i don't know it's not really anybody's favorite lou reed album i don't think the bells but uh i hate it yeah joe absolutely hates i haven't even heard it and i hate the it. bells but uh i've got a soft spot for this track which is track one on the bells and it's it, it almost sounds as if lou reed is doing a parody of of himself the I way i call he's... it the balls oh dear yeah. dear Joe's, Joe Cornish absolutely slams the bells by Lou Reed there on uh, BBC Six Music. But, uh, yeah, check this out. His accent is is uh, ludicrous in a very enjoyable way. Hope you like this. It's called Stupid Man. Stupid Man. Stupid it's man. like a Muppet yeah. song. Yeah. It's from, like, from Muppets Take Manhattan. I love it. It's good. Uh, it, our time's nearly up from, uh, oh, oh I gotta reconstruct that sentence. I'm gonna give that sentence reconstructive surgery. Well, I like the beginning of it. Our yeah. time's nearly up for, <laughs> you could have gone anyway. Why, why'd you lose confidence with that one? I don't know. I'm tired. Are you? I had fun last night. Did you? What were you doing? I was on my own. Oh, <laughs> on your own um, fun. Listen, <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> nearly time for the end of the show. <laughs> Thanks very much for listening. We'll be back at the same time next Saturday morning, what? 9 till 12. I thought I said something wrong. Someone texted in. You I... did, yeah. Thanks to Taff and Laura in Bristol uh, who've sent in an email. I'll, I'll, I'll read every word of it. Are you sure that Interpol track isn't called No... No, num what? I'm confused about what it's called. The number Interpol one in threesome. I said it was called number one in threesome. Of course, it's called no I in threesome. But you see, Taff and Laura, you, you don't make that distinction because it's the N-O space and then just a straight line. Is well, it a one or an I? That's where I went wrong. You know? <laughs> uh, but you're right. Adam did, did get it wrong. Hi. They also say, by the way, I'm glad you qualified the statement. I love it when people wake up during operations with in films. Mm. Mm. I, I don't, don't i don't like it in real life when that happens but that brings us on to the theme of text the nation next week yeah uh we've decided it's going to be um horror film ideas oh, okay don't you think yeah we can try yeah <laughs> yeah why not uh we we don't have too long to set this up but the idea is that horror films are quite played out we, yeah well we it's all just i mean the lowest common denominator is torture porn isn't it yeah and there's not that much imaginative stuff that goes into that because eli ross brought the genre to its knees yeah. we were looking at the poster for shrooms uh the market seems to be swamped with rubbish so we'd like your ideas for taking the horror genre uh, in a new direction yeah some really imaginative scary ideas we want from you chaps 
okay let's let's lick this problem together we can do it yeah. i'm pretty sure we can yeah uh but listen until then thank you so much for all your texts and emails and for listening to the show in general we really appreciate it um and uh, anything else to add to that joe no thanks very much adam <laughs> liz kershaw is coming up and uh that's it for another week here's mars with pump up the we'll volume. see you next week bye bye love you bye